What's up YouTube? This is James Q Quick from Learn, Build, Teach. And today I want to show you guys the basics of the Fetch API in JavaScript. So let's go ahead and dive in. So first of all, the Fetch API, what is it? Uh, according to the documentation, it provides an interfa interface for fetching resources. This is basically a mechanism in JavaScript to make HTTP requests. If you call an API, if you call um, some backend server to do something for you, it's usually over uh, REST and HTTP, and we can use the, the Fetch API to do this. Now, if you've done JavaScript for uh, several years, you probably are familiar with the XML HTTP request or XHR request. I haven't done a whole lot of these in the past, but it kind of gives you the ability to do HTTP requests as well, but it's a lot more complicated, a lot more convoluted to actually make a basic request. So the Fetch API is kind of the new built-in way uh, to do HTTP requests in JavaScript. Now there are extra additional packages outside um, of built-in JavaScript that you can get to do this. Uh, Axios is one, that's not what I'm looking for. Actually, don't wanna get into any political debates here. Uh, Axios on NPM is actually what I'm looking for. So the Axios package is probably uh, either, I don't know if it's more popular than Fetch or not, but I know both of them are pretty commonly used and Axios is probably a little more common. Uh, this is a third party package that you can bring into your application and use uh, instead of using the Fetch API. But the Fetch API is actually built into JavaScript so you don't have to, don't have to do anything to use it. So uh, using Fetch here, uh, pretty much probably what you would expect uh, here's an example here of fetching uh, a list of movies from example.com, which obviously is not real, but would be funny if it was real. So maybe we should give this a try. Maybe you guys at home give it a try and let me know. But uh, basically what you say is you call fetch, you pass it a URL, and by default this is going to do a get request. And then uh, it returns a promise, so then you can uh, dot then get the response, and the response you can then call dot JSON on that response which also returns a promise. And uh, what the dot JSON does is it takes the body of the response and it converts it to JSON. So by the time you get to the next then clause, you've, uh, you've got your data, you've got your actual response object, which is a JSON object. So that's the basics. And what we're gonna do is we're gonna use a website called JSON Placeholder. And this is actually on their GitHub, so on the docs of how to, uh, and get, JSON placeholder is pretty sweet. It has tons of different endpoints that you can hit to test things out. So you can test out your git post put or git post put patch delete uh, different options HTTP HTTPS. You can call it from anywhere. So you can do if you if you don't have your backend set up yet, but you just want, want to kind of make sure that you can call something or get some dummy data back. You can do this. In React, Angular, Vue, Ember, they kind of list these because they're big names, but you can do it from anywhere that you can make an HTTP request. So here's the most basic example, which actually uses the Fetch API. And I'm just going to copy this into this code pen. And the code pen is Fetch API Basics that you guys will have a link to. And I've got uh, four different buttons here, fetch, get, post, get async, post async. We'll talk about that in a minute. But to start, I'm just going to paste this in here and uh, show you what happens. So let's actually first, since we're doing a get request, we can just copy and paste this directly into the browser and we'll see that it returns us a dummy post. So here's uh, the post with ID one and it's returning lorem ipsum. So it's asking if I want to translate. I don't know if Google can translate that since lorem ipsum is actually just kind of made up, but it gives me the option anyway. Uh, and if I go in here and I get uh, post number two, it's gonna update uh, post number two, but it's still just dummy data, but pretty, pretty quick and easy to work with. So back in the, uh, the uh, let's see, what code pen here, I'm doing, a, a, again, a fetch to this URL, which uh, by default does a get, and then uh, on the dot then, I'm getting the response and I'm returning, this is an implicit return with fat error functions if you guys haven't seen this before. Uh, basically since we don't have a return statement and the format in which this is set will implicitly return the response.json which again is a promise that you then, uh, get it, uh, handle here 
and then uh, log out that JSON, which is what we're seeing here. So this JSON should match exactly what we saw in the output in the browser. So one thing uh, we also need to take into account is we might uh, we might fail, right? Our call to this API might fail, and this is where we can add a .catch. This is just pretty standard with promises. Promises either return a good case or a bad case. Good case is handled by .then. Bad case is handled by .catch, basically. So in here, we would get an error, and then we could console log that error. So to try to do this, I could mess up this URL, and there we get an error, and it's an object. So I could call JSON stringify to get a string version of this. Might show us a little bit more of what the error is. If I can get that third. Oh, just empty object. So it's just an empty error for whatever reason. Let's undo that. Uh, so don't forget when you're doing anything with promises that you need to handle the error case as well. Uh, and then if I go back and actually fix the placeholder here URL, it's actually going to work fine here. So that is a git. Uh, git is by default. And then you can also have posts where you need to post data to something. So if I look in, actually, let's just come back to JSON placeholder. To, to, to creating resources, a post. Here's an example of that that I can copy in and show you guys. And so it's basically the same thing. You pass in this URL, and then you got uh, your dot then where you convert your response to JSON, and then your second dot then on top of that to log it out. And the difference is you're basically passing in a configuration to fetch. So it's going to look for, it's going to grab the first URL. And if it, or the first parameter, if it doesn't have a second parameter, it's basically gonna be an implicit git. Uh, then the second parameter, if you want to do a different type, you can pass in the configuration object, which is from here to here. And on there, we're defining the method as post, pretty straightforward. The body here, this is a little interesting and something to note is you need to stringify whatever object you're working with. So fetch wants to send as the body value, the value of the body, just a regular string. And basically on the other end, uh, the whatever server is going to handle that and convert it to a JSON object for the server to work with. So we've got an object where we're passing in, um, see the actual object is here, and it's got a title body and user ID property. And then we're just stringifying that to be, um, just stringifying that just to be a string. Then the last part is the headers. We can set the content type and say we're passing in uh, JSON with uh, this encoding. Pretty straightforward. And then the same kind of thing here. We handle the response. We log it out if we need to. And this log, if I get rid of this first one, you should see if I clear it out and save it, run it again, it'll show just the log from the post, maybe question mark. Dun, dun, dun. Maybe if I make a change, there we go. Uh, just had to get that to trigger a change. So we see uh, the response actually comes back and looks exactly the same. Now I won't go too deep into this, but with fetch you also obviously have access to, let's see if we can get a put, where is put here? Any put examples? There we go, put. And this is basically gonna be the same thing. You're just defining your method as put instead of post. It's pretty straightforward. And the last one is a delete. And I'll have a delete in here. <coughs> it doesn't look that, like they actually have a delete um, example, which is kind of weird. But delete would be the same kind of thing. You specify your, specify your method as delete, and then uh, you don't really pass in a, you could pass in some data in the body of a delete if you wanted to, uh, depending on how your server is handling delete request. So those are the two basic ones. And notice I've got a couple of different buttons, a couple of different buttons on here. Let me remove this and we'll just look at the functions that I've got. So this fetch get is going to do the same thing that we already saw. So if I click, let's clear the console, click the fetch get, it's going to do that. If I do the fetch post, that's what we just saw as well. So I can do a fetch post. And again, the one thing that's not on here that should be is catch error and just log that error out so that we have it. 
And that should be on both of these, just for safety, because you never know. So uh, we've got that. And then we've also got, I want to talk a little bit about async await. And async await is kind of the newest, latest, uh, they call it it's syntactical sugar on top of regular promises, which allow you to do uh, async await, which has been around for a while in other languages. Uh, .NET, C Sharp is where I've used it before. And basically what it does is uh, allows me to make this fetch call. And instead of having the dot thens, which are kind of ugly and kind of annoying, I can put in a wait before the fetch and mark this function as a sync. And basically what this is gonna do is gonna go through and execute this line of code. Then it's going to execute this and it's going to wait for that response to come back. And then uh, same thing with converting that response to JSON. It's going to wait for that response to come back and put it in the body variable. Instead of returning the promise, it actually returns the value after the promise. So that's all the wait does is instead of doing this, where you end up getting your data this way, uh, await will actually just return that data directly to uh, what you get back. So this is this is kind of the new newest way of doing um, asynchronous requests with promises. And again, as async await just uses promises in the back, behind the scenes. So don't think that it's some new mysterious thing. It's just syntactical sugar. It's just a different way of expressing what you're doing. So uh, if we notice, if I do a fetch get async, it does the exact same thing and then the exact same thing down here for a fetch uh, post async, the exact same thing. Now the last thing I didn't mention is that uh, you can still have errors, right? Either one of these await uh, things, either one of these things that are being awaited on can have errors. So for that reason, you can surround these in a try catch. Actually, I'll just move these up. So this is saying, if you've never used a try catch before, it's saying try to do both of these, try to do all the things inside of here. If you get an error, it'll trigger the catch and then you can console log error. So this will be the same kind of thing. If I mess up uh, this URL and I call the fetch get async, I should see my error being printed out. So this is the exact same thing as what you would have seen with dot then, dot then, dot catch. No big deal. And I'll probably add, oops, not that. Probably add this to the other one as well, just in case there's a problem. So try and then put everything inside of there. All right, so let's just make sure all these work still. Fetch get, fetch post, fetch get async, and fetch post async and my fetch get async is not working because this should be JSON placeholder. I, and maybe it's worth doing, let's do, let's call this fetch get with error and let's just give it a bad URL. And that's just an example that you guys can have of how this catch is being triggered. And then if we wanted to do the same thing with the async version, copy this so you guys can have it. So we'll do fetch get async with error and remove that and it should be all good. So that's the basics of the fetch API. Again, this is just a way built into JavaScript. You don't have to do anything extra to get it uh, to make HTTP requests. You would have had older way with XML HTTP requests or XHR requests in the past. Trust me, you don't wanna to have to do that if you never have, and if you have done it, you know what I'm talking about because it's pretty, uh, yeah, there's a lot of stuff that goes into it and it's pretty convoluted and you don't really wanna to have to do all that stuff. So did this in combination with the JSON placeholder uh, backend, it just allows us to interact with some dummy data, which is super cool because you'll need this kind of thing pretty often when you're working on um, getting your project set up before you have your server built. So uh, Fetch API Basics on CodePen. The link will be in the video. You guys can check it out. Let me know, I'm curious. Are you guys using Fetch? Are you using Axios maybe? Are you using X XHR requests or something like that? What are you guys doing? How do you handle this situation now? Uh, and did this help? Is this something you may try out if you haven't done it before? Are you using async await? That would be cool to hear to see how many people are actually taking advantage of the latest syntactical sugar features in JavaScript. So all in all, that's the Fetch API. Those are the basics. Hope you guys enjoyed the video and I'll see you in the next one. Hey guys, if you enjoyed the video, 
leave a thumbs up, subscribe to the channel, and you can check out my newsletter on learnbuildteach.com to get updates on the latest content as it comes out. Thanks for watching.